started. Good morning. Uh, my name is Nate. Uh, we're going to be talking about empowering refugees with data. And uh, so myself and Ali Reza will be talking about you. We're from Development Seed, uh, based out in Washington, D.C. So one, one thing that we've been commonly uh, see and are asked is, how can we collect, hang on, collect data our remote's not working. How we can collect data, verify, uh, and publish. So collect, collect data from a num numerous, you know, whether tr you have a trusted network of uh, data collectors, volunteers, whether you have a, a you want to crowdsource, crowdsource a bunch of, this is my, I'm going to just turn this off. Get rid of this thing. I'll just talk aloud. All right, so common scenario that we see, we, we, people want to collect uh, data with a trusted network or a crowdsource a whole bunch of reports about an event uh, or uh, something that's happening in an area. They then want to verify or have some type of verification workflow uh, to be able to, to track those, those reports. And then lastly, you want to be, uh, a, a group may want to publish that data and uh, allow people to visualize, throw it up on a map, uh, be able to uh, kind of grab some simple uh, visualizations to start to compare and invite uh, a little bit more analysis into the data. So the question is, like, we, we recently started working with a partner on this, and uh, we asked the question, oh, oh, is there, are there open source? Uh, there's a lot of mobile tools out there. There's a lot of systems and platforms that that can, can do this. What we're, we're, we're going to talk about today is a bit of our experience is that there's not a lot to, out there that, that's really easy to do. There's some difficulties, there's short, shortcomings, and so we're going to talk a little bit today uh, just our experience in, in Lebanon. So in, in Lebanon, it's a small country in the Middle East that uh, borders one of the uh, biggest conflicts in the last uh, few years. Uh, in Syria, and so uh, they have over one million refugees in Lebanon alone. The whole region has over over four million refugees, but that of that one million, a lot of you know those aren't new refugees. Many of them are Palestinian refugees living in in camps uh, or communities uh, across Lebanon. And so we've been working with a partner uh, called Pursue, who have been working in twelve. Palestinian uh, refugee camps across Lebanon. These, all these camps are, you know, from from out west, uh, or sorry, on the west, in, like in urban areas like Beirut to out east that border Syria, the north and the south bordering Israel and uh, north, uh, northern part of Syria as well. But these camps, so these camps are 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 really actually communities. Some of them are permanent housing. Some of them are. Uh, you know, uh, you know, in rural areas, some of them are in urban areas, right on the coast, and and so within these camps, uh, you like they're 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 communities. They need government services. They need uh, access to things like waste management, healthcare, electricity, water, health, education. All these 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 key parts of the community that allow uh, people to, um, to live, live their life. So we, uh, working with Pursue, we started looking into this, this workflow of publishing, verifying, uh, or collecting, verifying, and publishing uh, government services in 12, 12 uh, camps uh, across Lebanon. So what they want to do is they wanted to, to in each camp, have a team of their volunteers go out, collect reports about uh, the status of electricity, uh, whether we have water is, is working or not. Um, are uh, doctors uh, occupying health clinics and can we, are they open? Can we go and visit them? And, um, and so they wanted to start not only comparing them in one camp, but all 12 camps and have teams of volunteers in, within each camp. So they wanted to collect a lot of data. Then they wanted to verify this data. So they had not their own staff, but they had volunteers within each of these camps. 
So th while they are trusted, their trusted network, they also wanted to have some type of verification to understand, okay, if this report is coming in that my electricity is out in a certain neighborhood in one of these communities, do they have a, somewhat of a workflow to, to track, follow up, verify or, or you know whether this is true or verify this false and be able to start collect this data uh, uh, you know across all the camps and then lastly they wanted to publish this data uh, and advocate and, and help empower these communities to understand what is the, the quality and level of government services within these camps so they wanted to put on some simple visualizations they wanted to put it on a map to, to see the difference between the north and the south and, and so they started having volunteers simply pull up their iPhone and enter, click on, I want to actually report an electricity outage. So I can simply go to my mobile form, fill out when, where, uh, and uh, more details about what's happening. Then back at headquarters at Pursue, they have a team of uh, volunteers who can go through a verification workflow, pull up. Uh, see all the different uh, different types of uh, reports that are coming in re regarding water, regarding health, electricity, be able to then go into an individual report and say, okay, great, Here's, this, is, uh, this is a report we're seeing, this is verified true because I followed up with them. Um, but it's not just like having the ability to go to one report, it's about having some type of a UI to switch in and triage hundreds of reports that are coming in. And I, I think that's the, that's the key here is that being it, having you know, uh, a lot of reports coming in, you need to be able to handle that in a, in a smart way to be able to say, this is verified or this is unverified. So after, after verifying, uh, then uh, we can publish the, these results and start to visualize these on a map, so we can see all, all 12 camps at once, see the total aggregate of reports, and get the breakdown of you know, what are, what are, where are a lot of reports uh, coming from and what type of reports are being, uh, being you know, uh, re uh, recorded. So we can get a breakdown, see uh, the difference between electricity and water reports. We can click on and go directly into a single camp uh, and see the neighborhoods with, across that district. We can go uh, from you know, one camp to another camp and be able to dive right in and see, see, see the breakdown of, of, of the reports. Then they can uh, click on the individual reports and be able to see like, you know, the difference between verified and unverified and then be able to uh, kick out a full report of, of a community or, uh, and, and get more aggregated data. So if you're collecting for over a month, then going to the electricity provider in this, this area or going to the water provider or going into the, the health, uh, the, all the different health cl uh, clinics if there's a significant issue uh, that they're starting to see. So this workflow that they have is, is helping them collect, gather that data, gather insight, be able to analyze some of this, and then use that to uh, uh, you know, advocate on, on, on their behalf. And, and so this, this project, we just uh, kicked this off, and, um, and I, I think this, this, this in, you know, entire uh, application that we've built has really given us a little bit of insight of what is it like to do this in a low-cost, open-source way. And so I'm going to uh, ask Ali Reza to give us a bit more of like how we did this. This is a little bit of the higher level, like here's what's happening. Um, and then let's, so let's dive into some of the technical details. So, let's see if this works for me. Yes, it does. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, in order to build this thing, we had a number of challenges that we had to overcome. 
not working anymore. All right. So uh, we wanted to make sure that whatever we are building, first of all, is very easy to use because it had to cater to a large group of people. I mean, from the people who were going to design the surveys, from people who were going to monitor it, verify it, deploy it, and also the people who were going to use it. Uh, also, it was important for us that it would be accessible on mobile phones as well as on, on web browsers. Uh, we wanted to make sure that a variety of platforms can be used uh, so it has the highest access. The original idea of our client Pursue was to have an app on iPhone, but we advised them against it. Not everyone, for example, has an iPhone. It has a, a higher cost of building an iOS app. And the maintenance is difficult. Maybe there are people who see something and want to go home, sit by a computer, and report it, etc. cetera. So it, uh, we advised against it, and we wanted to make sure that there's a tool that can be accessed on every platform. It was also very important for our client and for ourselves that whatever we built can be handed over to local actors. Uh, because this project that they are doing has an end date, and then their, their goal is to make it sustainable by giving it to local NGOs, etc. Which meant whatever we wanted to do well, is supposed to be easy to maintain. So there is not a lot of cost associated with maintaining it. And also, there shouldn't be a lot of costs associated with having the technology altogether. Uh, for example, I mean, right now there are many tools for creating surveys and collecting data from Survey Gizmo to, uh, to other companies, but the problem with them is that m many of them have ongoing costs that, especially if you want to use uh, apps on mobile, et cetera, it, would, it, would, it could be a lot more than what a local NGO can afford. And of course, we are committed to open source. We were very interested to do this in an open source fashion. Fortunately, there is a very good ecosystem to do this already. Uh, our goal was to try to find tools that can fill these three questions. We wanted to have tools for collecting the data. Then we wanted to have other tools for verifying that data and then have the ability to publish it for the public and for the people who were supposed to act on that data. Uh, for data collection, uh, we decided to use the ODK ecosystem, which has a number of components. Let me press the space again. <laughs> yes. The ODK uh, ecosystem that uh, there are a lot of components associated with it. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone here has ever used ODK or has heard about it. Oh, a few people. Uh, so essentially, ODK uh, is built on top of a number of standards. One of them is something that is called XForm, which is essentially kind of a markup XML format for transporting data. And, and and it's used for building the questionnaire, the survey, and also uh, transmitting the data associated with each question. Uh, it has a number of, basically, players that use this ecosystem for transmitting the data. One of them is this tool called ODK Collect. ODK Collect is an Android app. Uh, if you go to Play Store and if you have an Android, you can download it. Uh, what it does is that it can read any X form uh, from a, an X form provider, which would be a server, and then it turns it into uh, basically a number of questions that have the different types. It could be a multiple choice question, a question with uh, an input, it could be a geolocation, it could be an image, all sort of questions that you create in form of a survey. Then individuals can use this ODK Collect to answer those questions and then send it back. Uh, to the server that it was received from. Uh, that server where the questions is stored on and can basically, the question can be retrieved from it and then the responses can be sent to it. There are a number of ways for doing that. The most common uh, setup that is uh, used in this ODK uh, environment is called FormHub. 
for FormHub is, a, is essentially a Django application. It's written in Python, and Django is a web application that you can install it on your server and platform and put your surveys there, and then it can be connected to an ODK collect uh, for, uh, for answering a survey. There is another uh, component here called Enkido. Enkido is essentially very similar to ODK Collect, but this is a web-based, basically, uh, form. What it does is that it reads the X form a standard, and then it generates the questions inside your browser. And, and it's fully, uh, basically, mobile-friendly. So if you, if you open an Enkido, Enkido form on a mobile phone, it adjusts everything is responsive. If you open it on a web browser, uh, then it adjusts to the size of your screen. Uh, we use these three things to do our uh, data collection. Uh, and it was uh, well, one of the reasons that we use it was that it's actually very easy to create this process for someone who is not necessarily familiar with these pieces. All they have to learn is to basically f figure out something that is called XLS form, which essentially allow you to create a full survey, a very actually complicated survey with all sort of questions, all sort of question types, uh, and also with different flows. For example, if you want to go from question one to question five, depending on the answer, et cetera, you can build all of that in an Excel document. It doesn't require really no technical knowledge. As long as you know how your questions are, how the survey is going to flow, you can easily create it. Then all you have to do is to use this form hub uh, to upload the XLS form there, and, and there you have it. You have a full survey that then you can deploy either, it, either with ODK Collect or with the, uh, with the Enkido form to the public. Uh, FormHub is an open source project. Uh, there's actually, it has a website where you can go and uh, open a free account and start using it right away. But there are other providers that use FormHub, uh, Fork of FormHub, and they actually offer a better service because uh, I guess they have uh, basically more fun funding and can run FormHub on larger servers, so it has a better response time. Uh, one of them that we use is actually called ONA, ONA.io. That's the form hub version that we use for this project. Uh, and, and then the result was that when they created this survey, uh, they, they could either use it on this Android app, the ODK Collect, or they could open up the Enkido form on a web browser and answer the questions. But this was only part of what we wanted to do. And we wanted to go further than this. We wanted to figure out how to do the verification and how to do the publishing part of it. Uh, unfortunately, on FormHub, all it allows you to do is to create a survey, uh, put it out. When people fill it out, all the results are going to be recorded there. You, you can browse around. You can download the data. Uh, but that's about it. It's really mostly designed for people who need the raw data, and then they know how to use the raw data afterward. Uh, so we had to find a way to figure out how to do the verification and, uh, and how to do the pu publishing. And we wanted to make sure that this thing remains a low-cost, open-source solution. Uh, and that's how we come up with this design. Uh, so the top part is essentially what I describe you have the form hub, you have the ODK and Enkido, and they communicate with each other with the form hub API that is out there. What we did, which was new, was this verification platform here, which is essentially another, uh, I mean, we build this with Django again, uh, but I mean, you can build it with any sort of framework. We build it in Django and Python. It communicates with form hub API and it's actually a one-way communication, meaning that we only query FormHub. FormHub never contacts our platform. Uh, and all it does is that it grabs all the responses that are being sent to FormHub all the time and stores it in our verification platform. Uh, FormHub also has a very great feature, and that is 
whenever there is a response coming to form hub for a survey, it can immediately send it to uh, another address that you define, in this case, our verification platform. So it's kind of a live flow that is happening. I mean, we don't need to query form hub all the time to see if there are new responses. If a new response arrives to form hub, it immediately uh, gets rerouted to our verification platform. It also has a number of other uh, good uses. One is that uh, we kind of house our data outside of form hub in a separate database with our own design the way that we want it. So we have kind of more confidence in the integrity of the data that we are storing. Uh, and then we wanted to build a front end, a map with charts uh, and different views, and we wanted to uh, build a very beautiful, basically, uh, visualization. And for that, we needed to have access to data in various ways. If we didn't have this verification platform in between, we had to directly communicate with FormHub API. And that FormHub API is very limited. It doesn't really ha give you the ability to play with the data in a way that it would be uh, useful. So we had to build our own API. We actually built a very robust API for our verification platform that allow you to uh, query the data in all sort of ways. It uh, gives you the CAM dimension, the neighborhood dimension. It allows you to query it by date, to query it by uh, other factors. Uh, and, and of course, because it was our own work, we were able to optimize it as much as we can so it would be responsive to a large amount of traffic. Also, in terms of the cost, which was really important for us, the only thing that our client has to really maintain in the future is this part. Uh, this whole thing above is run on other people's infrastructure. For the form how I told you, we use Una, and it actually allows you to have free accounts there. So we don't need to worry about where we run our own, how we maintain it, how we update it. ODK is an Android app, so it's not our concern. Enkido, we use the Enkido website for creating the forms, and again, they have a free service that allow you to have forms. So this whole thing above is third-party services. We're not concerned about its maintenance, whether it's up or not, and so on. And it has worked very well. And for the map, it's essentially a static website. Uh, it doesn't have any server, it doesn't have anything, and it's hosted on GitHub pages. Uh, so essentially, we put all the code on GitHub, and it serves as a website. Uh, and because of that, it, it's always there, it's always up, it's always very fast, responsive. Uh, this design, we think, uh, kind of took away some of the complexity of building such a platform. At the same time, it made it a lot cheaper and quite powerful, in fact. Uh, we also learned a lot of lessons doing this. I mean, the, this whole ODK uh, ecosystem on the top is really powerful. I mean, it allows you to do things that in the past you would have spent a lot of money doing it. Right now you can do it very quickly. All you need to have is an XLS form. I mean, an Excel, basically, application to create uh, a survey. You need an account in a website like Una or FormHub. Uh, and then you just have to train people how to use ODK or Enkido. Uh, but then it also has a lot of shortcomings. FormHub it has been around, I guess, for two or three years. Uh, and of course, in the world of you know, web development, things are changing so rapidly. There are just newer technologies, better technologies, faster technologies. And FormHub has not catch up. Uh, it, it, is, it is an application that is really heavy. Uh, it's very difficult to deploy it. It's really d difficult to change it if you want to run it on your own. And, and in our, I mean, it's very likely that people, if they want to have Form Hub doing more than what they want, they essentially have to come up with a design like this, which is not always ideal. I mean, in a lot of cases, it might be actually easier if you can package everything in one application. It might be faster, easier. Uh, so uh, the kind of the future that we think would make a lot of sense for uh, 
the ODK ecosystem is maybe more investment, more work in, in how the, basically the data storage works in this middle, which is the form hub. Uh, and there are actually some efforts. I mean, there, it didn't go, sorry. Uh, right. Uh, the, there are some efforts. I mean, uh, for example, we heard from uh, a friend of ours uh, that uh, they are w w working, for example, on a no form hub scenario where uh, they have built a little app that allow you to basically store all the data that is collected through ODK Collect in an static form on a GitHub repo rather than having any sort of server. That would be amazing. I mean, if it, if it happens, it takes away a lot of the issues that people have with you know, running uh, a large and heavy server for FormHub. Uh, there are, I mean, some talks about rebuilding for FormHub in a more kind of a resilient, asynchronous platform like Node.js, uh, or maybe rebuilding it with another Python framework called Flask or maybe refactoring FormHub to make it faster and take away some of the big issues that it currently has. Uh, this is kind of an overview of, I guess, of everything. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I can show you very quickly the visualization that we built on top of our work. Yes, go ahead. I noticed you had multiple language support. Is that part of what you ODK actually, I mean, ODK uses the Android localization support. So if your phone is in Arabic, if the language is in Arabic, then ODK becomes fully Arabic. And actually, yeah, it ha I mean, I guess ODK uh, localization files are hosted on Transifix and it's open and a lot of people go and add languages to it. And it already has a good amount of Arabic and French, I believe, and Spanish. Uh, so if your phone has a different language, everything appears in that language. Oh, so our verification is built for Lebanon, and so it has two. It, it supports two languages, Arabic and English, and uh, and the default language is Arabic. So if you go to that website, you see an Arabic website, uh, and then in in the XLS form, that Excel file you can have as many labels in as many languages as you want for each question. Uh, and then when you build it, the X form a standard takes care of the rest. So if you had 10 languages for the same survey, when you open it up on Enkido, for example, all the languages appear there. It's, it's really smart. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, that that is true. I mean, uh, at least this particular case is a little bit similar to Ushaidi project. But I guess what is different is uh, really the ability of this system to have, you know, very complex surveys. And uh, yeah, the part of it that is visualization might be similar to Ushaidi, although I guess it has significant differences because of the just the different way that we have visualized it. But on the data collection side, I think it's very different from Mushahidi because uh, we are, I mean, we are using the ODK and an Android native app in a very complex survey that has different rules and the questions changes depending on the answer that you give. I don't think you, you can build that with Mushahidi unless you want to heavily change it, which would be a big project, yes. Uh, so uh, the idea is really, actually, let me go back to this slide so I can, yes. So uh, the idea is really not to change that ODK. ODK is a, is a separate stack, so we don't want to change it at all, the ODK collect. We also don't want to change Enkido or 
any of those collection tools. There are separate stacks, separate languages, and Kiro is written, I mean, it used to be written with PHP, now it's Node. ODK is Java and Android. So we, we don't want to change those stacks, but what we have is this X form standard. We know that how to communicate with them. The idea of that static form of basically no server in the middle is kind of inaccurate. I mean, I have to say it differently. There, there would be a server in the middle, but it would be a very small server, and all it does is that uh, when it receives data from ODK, it just writes it to a GitHub repository. So you cannot really take away this middleman that has to handle the data. You have to have it there. But uh, it would be just simpler server that doesn't have to do a lot of things that FormHub does. All it does is just write the data on a separate repository. And, and then what is beautiful about this approach is that because, I mean, if you're doing an open public data, your data is immediately available on GitHub. And so people, other people who want to access it, they just go to GitHub, either you know, do a pull request, clone it, or just browse through the data, and they always have it. And it essentially gives you a free API, you know, that you don't have to implement it. Uh, so this one is called, what was the address? It was called Simple ODK, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah I guess it's simple-odk.com or something. That's the address of the If project. anyone's interested in talking about this more, go to this next session with the Are we? Thank no. Oh, we have two more okay. okay. So we can have a couple more questions. Yes. So it seems like the verification has been part of this. Um, in your experience, have you seen are there things, are there many reports that are not able to be verified? And is there any kind of trend in what's going on there? Well, I mean, I know that our client is piloting the project, and I'm not really familiar with. Uh, how they actually going to ver verify the data because they have to kind of differentiate from what they receive from the member of the public and their own representatives. But what we have built here is actually uh, there is a question at the end of the survey that they have to, end. I mean, it, it asks for an email address. And then on the verification platform, we have built this algorithm that if an email address matches one of the representatives, then it flags as that representative's report on the ground. And so those reports are automatically counted as like verified because they are coming from trusted sources. And right now, I think they're piloting this the survey and you know, tweak the, the questions that they ask, but we're going to help them verify. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll have to Yeah. Another challenge that we had was, I mean, part of this work was to have geolocated data, right? Uh, asking pe people where you are, et cetera. And then they realized that a lot of people are not really comfortable sharing that data. And so it meant a map with no geolocation, which would have been a disaster. So uh, what we ended up uh, was uh, there are two questions on the surveys. One is the camp name, the other is the neighborhood. We got all the geolocations of all the neighborhoods and the camps, and that's how we are kind of showing them on the map. It's not the exact location of the event, but it's within a neighborhood, which is kind of very, I guess, accurate when, when we go on the particular camp. So, yeah, I mean, it actually zooms in into that area, and I guess it's kind of a good approximation. Uh, another thing that we added was this ability to download all the data in CSV format. So all the data for each camp, everything else, you can download it. You can v view them as a list, although this is just showing one camp. So you can view them as a list. You can filter them based on you know, the type of the report. And then you can uh, view the questions, although this, I guess, has a problem with the Safari browser. Anyway, and then, of course, it's dual languages. Uh, th this was another challenge. I mean, if, if you wanted to use FormHub, it, it was difficult to have an interface that is completely localized to another language. 
but having our own verification platform allowed us to do that very easily. Okay, I guess time's up. Thank That's it. Thank you.